here at the Coliseum. The 2010 opener, and it should be a good one. It's the Seattle Mariners and the Oakland Athletics. You'll see it right here on Comcast Sportsnet California. Good evening, everybody. Welcome to another season of Oakland A's Baseball, along with my partner, Ray Fossey. I'm Glenn Kuyper. Lots of excitement, as always, on opening night. But Ray, how about Ben Sheets starting the opener for a new team? And let's not forget, he didn't pitch at all last year. This young man has to be really excited. You know, when the A's signed him, they said, you're going to be the opening night starter. So he's out of a couple of months to get ready for tonight. He's pumped up. He knows how to pitch. Great fastball, great curveball. I think he's going to go right after these hitters, try to keep zeros against the Seattle Mariners so the A's can get to King Felix. And zeros is a pretty good idea against yeah, uh, Felix right. Hernandez, second in the American League Cy Young last year. That is what the A's will be going up against tonight. Stick around. We'll have lineups and first pitch when we come back. We are ready to go, folks. It's the A's and the Mariners. Season opener coming up next. And we are set to go with Ben Sheets on the mound, Kurt Suzuki behind the home plate, and Ichiro Suzuki stepping in the box. So, I've been looking forward to this night for a while, as we always do with the season opener. Big crowd on hand, a cool night, but very clear skies, which we had hoped for. <laughs> And they are here. Ichiro's ready. Sheets is ready. First pitch of the 2010 season is a bit high, so we are underway. We'll give you the rest of the Mariners lineup in just a little bit. Second pitch is popped up on the infield, and it's going to be Kevin Kuzman off behind the mound. Ichiro's retired, and that's the first down. Rest of the Mariners lineup, it looks like this. You saw Ichiro leading it off. Sean Figgins will hit second and play second base. Kochman, Bradley is the cleanup hitter. Then Junior Griffey, Lopez, Gutierrez, Johnson, and Wilson. So certainly some new names for the Seattle Mariners this year. Also at the top of the batting order, left-handed. There's some switch hitters in there, but against Ben Sheets, hitting left-handed. The first five. And Ben does not take very much time. He gets the ball, he lets it go, and uh, as soon as Suzuki gets it back to him, gets a sign, hitters might be stepping out on him a little bit. Oh, there's the hook. Well, when your stuff is as good as Sheets is, you have a pretty good idea what you're yeah. going to throw. And that's his specialty, the curveball, 12 to 6. He'll throw a couple of different varieties, but they're hard, and he can throw them in the dirt, get hitters to swing at them. Like that one. And he's got a good catcher, Kurt Suzuki, to block. The ball is out or thrown in the dirt, so that makes it uh, a lot easier for a pitcher to be able to unload, let it go, and not worry about the ball getting past his catcher. He's not going to be 100%. There will be some get by, but he'll block the majority. 1 2 to Sean Figgins is a bit high. 2 and 2. Casey Kotsman waits in the on deck circle. Just underway here at the Coliseum. Now three and two. The Mariners and the Athletics in what should be a very competitive American League Western Division this year. A couple of former Angels hitting back to back. Sean Figgins, Casey Kochman. And after getting ahead 0-2, Sheets walks Sean Figgins. 
First base runner for Seattle. Defensively for the A's tonight. Travis Buck in left field. Raja Davis in center. Ryan Sweeney in right. Kuznoff, Pennington, Ellis, and Barton are the infielders. Kurt Suzuki the catcher. And the numbers for Ben Sheets from 2008. Yeah, all of 2009 he sat home rehabbing. and uh, But he is a workhorse. 198 in the third innings. And in those starts that he made in 2008 with the Brewers. And Figgins took a couple of high pitches. They were called balls by... Home plate umpire Tim Sheeta, but the thing that about him, he's just trying to zone down on well, the first one to Kochman, who's a little bit taller, was a strike. There's Tim Cheeta. Bob Davidson is at first, Alfonso Marquez at second, Mike Malinsky is the third base umpire. Figgins a good lead, and there he goes. And the pitch is inside. Throw to second base. He is not quite in time. And it's going to trickle into center field, and Figgins is going to end up at third. Mark Ellis was there to back it up. But it hit something and kind of trickled away from him. And that allowed Figgins to get to third. Well, the ball just happened to scoop in front or bounce in front of Cliff Pennington. Pretty good pitch to throw by Kurt Suzuki. Came up trying to make the quick tag. Figgins was not going to third until the ball got past Mark Ellis. And you're right, it hit something to deflect away from Ellie. Otherwise, Figgins would have stayed at second. Stolen base E2, and the infield comes in for the A's. And Kochman shoots one just foul. Well, fortunately, Ben Sheets is a strikeout pitcher, and that's exactly what he's looking for now. He's gotten ahead of him with one and two. See if he tries to drop a curveball. A hard one to get him swing and miss, or maybe a called third strike. Well, that was a pretty good curveball, and Kochman was able to hold up. It's a four game series. The first three we will televise, and we'll spend a fair amount of time talking about obviously the changes the A's made, but the Seattle Mariners made all kinds of roster changes in the offseason. Discuss that. Curveball drilled right center, and that's trouble. Davis isn't going to get it, and it bounces off the wall. Kochman will stop at second with a double, and the Seattle Mariners take a 1-0 lead here in the first. It was the curveball, but it just got a little bit too much of the play. Now, when it stays up the way that one did, then... That's usually going to be the result. Look where it ends up. And Kochman probably after the first one that he laid off. And, of course, they have the scouting report. Knowing that Ben Sheets has an extra curveball, but that went up enough that he could pull it in the right center. Rajay Davis could not get to it. And here is Milton Bradley, one of the new Mariners. Not a happy year in Chicago for Milton Bradley last year, so he came over to the Mariners in the trade for Carlos Silva. Bradley getting in the cleanup spot. Part of the thinking there, maybe Ray, that a couple years ago when Bradley had the big year in Texas, he hit cleanup a lot. And he had an all-star season with the Rangers. But he's also a switch hitter, so. They can have him bet, of course, either way, depending on who's pitching. You mentioned with Figgins, Bradley, switch hitters. He's got those uh, alternated as Don Wakamatsu in his second season managing the Seattle Mariners. Swing and a miss. There's that good curveball. Ben is pretty much a two pitch pitcher, fastball, curveball, and this one, a good one. Ends up just a little bit below the knees, but a swing and a miss. Full count with Ken Griffey Jr. in the on deck circle. Sean Figgins, a walk, a stolen base, he scored a run. And the curveball is. Way inside to the backstop. Bradley walks into third is Kochman. So first and third, one out here in the first. 
Let's take a look at the game time weather for tonight. It is brought to you by the Santa Cruz Beach Boardwalk. The admission is free and the boardwalk is open daily. 54 degrees, just a slight breeze. And I'm okay with that forecast because Ooh. the way it looked last night, at least where we live, Ray, it was raining hard and it was very cold this morning and it even rained this afternoon for a while. Turns out to be a cool but a comfortable night for a ball game. Well, they said 70% chance of rain. Unfortunately, 70% ended at about 2 o'clock. Yep, that's right. Here's Griffey. Chance to knock in a run. Sheets has walked a couple here in the first. Well, you like to be thinking double play, and the A's actually are playing for the double play. But King Griffey Jr. is more of a fly ball hitter. Has been throughout his career, as his home runs would attest. A high fastball foul at bat. 630 career home runs for Griffey. Fifth most all time. We saw him right at the end of the year last year, and of course. The questions were, will he come back? And he decided he would like to come back. And as we talked in, if Ken Griffey Jr. wants to come back, how could Seattle say no? And he had 19 home runs last year, knocked in 57 runs, played a little over half the time. He was. Your DH for the most part did not hit for a very high average, just 214. He is a threat, no doubt about it. Keeps the clubhouse alive. Of course, they have Eric Burns, former athletic, as well as Mike Sweeney back for the second year. Step off. Oh my. Bradley takes off to throw the second, and they got him. Wow, what a play by Ben Sheets. Watching the play develop, there's no way you could think that with the speed of Milton Bradley. That to fake the third and look back, and they could still throw to second, and Sheets be able to get Bradley. And of course, at third, Kochman wondering what's going on. Well, watch Bradley take off. He's he's gone. <laughs> Fortunately, Ben did a fake to third, which allows him to do exactly what he did, and that's to throw back to second base without having to throw to the plate or even a first base. So, a great play. Bang bang play, very close oh, yeah. in second. That was the pop up slide, and that's how they were able to get it. So, a big break for the A's if they can get Griffey. And they're going to get him. It's a ground ball to Ellis, and it could have been worse. Seattle gets one, but nothing else. They strand the runner. We're headed to the bottom of the first. Rajay Davis will lead it off. 1 nothing, Mariners.
bottom of the first inning. Lineup for the Athletics tonight. Rajay Davis, Derek Barton, Ryan Sweeney. Kevin Kuzmanoff is in the cleanup spot. Kurt Suzuki, Eric Chavez, Mark Ellis, Travis Bucket left, and Cliff Pennington is the shortstop. Defensively for the Mariners, Bradley, Gutierrez, and Suzuki in the outfield. Lopez, Wilson, Figgins, Kochman around the infield. Rob Johnson is the catcher. And in Felix, Felix Hernandez is the pitcher. Case in his first pitch of the season is in first strike to Rajay Davis. Davis, Martin, Sweeney here in the bottom of the first inning. Casey Kochman with an RBI double. At the top of the first for the only run. It's like Felix Hernandez added a little bit of a twist to his windup as he spins back towards second base. For a long, he'll be Louis Tia. Yeah. Back completely to the home plate. Well, he doesn't need to change a whole lot. What a season last year for Felix Hernandez. Didn't win him the Cy Young, but pretty darn close. He finished second to Zach Greinke. Well, I'd say there's at least one, if not more, in the future for the young man who's just 24. Aaron has locked him up to a long-term deal that will allow him not to worry at all about money. Uh, how about 78 million? So he's okay with 78. I think it, if if he goes back to his home country, Venezuela, <laughs> that uh, yeah, he should do just fine. Five years, 78 million contract that runs through 2014, signed in the off-season. Felix Hernandez. That is Cliff Lee in the middle. He is starting the season on the disabled list. Mariners still not quite sure when they will get him back. Sometime in April, they think. He's a good man right there, Don yeah. Wakamatsu. Big chop. Hernandez bare hands throws to first. Not in time. Rajay Davis with an infield hit. Well, fortunately, Rajay's blessed with a lot of speed because he was flying down. Felix Hernandez made a tremendous play. Ball that hits home plate straight down off the plate. Rajay smelling a hit, but Felix Hernandez barehanded. Perfect throw. A little bit offline. Kochman comes off the bag, but what a play by Felix Hernandez. And whenever you catch the ball barehanded, you don't necessarily have a great grip. I mean, you're just taking whatever grip you have, and maybe it sailed on Kochman a little bit. Here's Derek Barton. So the A's run a lot last year in the second half, led by Rajay Davis, who had 41 steals. We'll see if he tries to get his first of this season here in the first. He's got a good lead. And there's no doubt Bob Garrett, staff, I'll stop watches just to see how quickly. Felix Hernandez unloads the baseball. 133 steals for the A's last year. They changed their style and it worked for them. RJ not running and the pitch is a strike on the outside corner, one and one. Long look down by Derek Barton and Mike Gallego, the third base coach. Third baseman Lopez way off the line at third, and that opens up a big hole between the bag and the third baseman. And if they stay outside, Derek Barton likes to go to the opposite field. Although Milton Bradley, the left fielder, playing very shallow. But still, it sets up perfectly for Barton to shoot one to left field. And there goes Rajay, but he bluffs and goes back. Nice play by the shortstop Jack Wilson digging out that throw from the first baseman Kochman. Rajay took a couple of steps and then stopped. Well, there's that season we talked about. 19 and 5, ERA 2.49. And how about the walks? Just 71 walks, 217 strikeouts. Seconds is Zach Grenke, who had fewer wins than Felix Hernandez, but he was dominating, especially the first part of the season last year. Felix Hernandez finished the season 15 and 2. And you would think someone finishes that way, that it'd be the odds on favorite to win the Cy Young Award, but it was Ricky who won it. Very deserving. 
Ryan Sweeney hitting in the third spot. Ace made that decision, right? What? Maybe about halfway through spring training. Maybe there's a lot of talk about Kurt Suzuki hitting third. And he did at the beginning of spring training, but the Ace kind of made a little, little switch. Sweeney third and dropped. Suzuki down to the fifth spot with Kuzminov in the end next. Brian Sweeney, 293 average last year. Hit six home runs, had 53 runs bad in, played 134 games for the A's. Bounces that one. Figgins charges. Tags, throws to first, and no call made. The throw to second hits Barton. What is going on? Well, the first base umpire never made any call. And they're saying it's a double play. He never made a call yeah. at the play at first base. Right, exactly. Which was a bang bang play. That was the strange part. Bob Davidson never did anything. We'll show you that play when we come back. Runner Ryan Sweeney going to first base. Right. Now they called the runner Barton out of the baseline. But the question is, if no call was made at first base, who who made the call? So nobody made any call here. See, Bob Davidson never called anything, including Sweeney, the runner at first. And Alfonso so Martin. it's automatically. How is it then a double play? It shouldn't have been there an automatic. Was no, there was no call made right. at first base. And Alfonso Marquez made the call. He eventually made the call, and then told Bob Guerin. But I agree, Bob. Shake your head because it was a bad call. And I'm not sure he was out of the baseline either. Well, no, because you create your own base baseline base path based on where the, the fielder is. It's not like yeah, there's mean, kind of a three three foot. Yeah, lane. exactly. But it looked like Barton really just kind of fell down. Yeah. And then you saw the fact that the tag was made with the glove, not the ball. And then the late throw to first. And then the late <laughs> throw to first, but we don't know what the deal was at first. <laughs> wow. Oh, welcome to opening night. Let's check out our keys to the game that are brought to you by Toyota. Opening night, sure, a lot of excitement. You want to try to get the first hit if you're a player. 
And you pitch well against the Mariners offense, and that's how you beat Felix Hernandez. And basically, that's all you can do is hope that your pitcher is pitching well against his offense. I think Ben Sheets got through the first inning, giving up just one run, which was excellent considering everything that happened. If this is what the season is going to be like after one inning. John Figgins shows up in a new uniform and he's the middle of everything. So if you're the Mariners, you're thinking that's the luckiest double play yeah. we've ever gotten, ever. Well, that's why you can see Sean Figgins going back to the dugout just smiling and high fives because he knew he had tagged Barton sure. with his glove and the ball in his right hand. And it looked like Sweeney beat the throw at first, but <laughs> there was no call made, so I guess it's just automatically out. Oh, yeah. Call. I know why Bob Davidson was 10 feet inside on the dirt instead of on the first baseline. Anyway. Kuzminov handles kind of a spinning ground ball if there is such a thing. And throws out Franklin Gutierrez. Two outs here in the second inning. Running the eighth position, the catcher, number 32, Rob Johnson. I remember Rob Johnson from last year, but you also remember a guy named Kenji George who had signed a three year contract extension, but decided to go back to Japan. He gave it up. He did not uh, complete the contract. So that opened up for a couple of young catchers to get an opportunity to catch for Don Makamatsu. You know what else it opened up? Sixteen million dollars. <laughs> yeah. yeah, when you walk away from a contract, you don't get paid. Dude. Suzuki comes back to the screen. You know, Ray. In fairness to Bob Davidson, as I'm thinking about that play now, he was watching the tag, which turned out to be a no tag, and he did not make a call on that play because. He knew that a, he saw that a tag actually was not made. You understand what I'm saying? But the question is, is that his call if he's the first base umpire? I don't think so. <laughs> that's that's the question. I would not think so. I'd say that would be more Marquez. Rob Johnson drives one left center and gone. Rob Johnson, a home run with two outs here in the second, and the Mariners take a two nothing lead. Fall behind, you challenge fastballs. Hitters. No, it's coming, and Johnson put a charge into it. Jake Wilson. Fastball, center cut. Great extension. And again, that's the scout report on Ben Sheets. Heavy night air at the Coliseum. That was not affected by any of that. Jack Wilson hits one pretty well to center field, but Davis is going to get back there. Side retired. A home run by Rob Johnson. Try to haul out the rule book when we get back.
Yes. From that game's end. Yes. Kuzminov grounds to short. Well, went into the rule book a little bit on that play that ended the bottom of the first inning. The interference. Right in the fifth position. Part of the, the rule book. But Number eight. A base runner is out if he runs more than three feet away from his baseline to avoid being tagged. Now, in this case, Barton was called out. Right. And the, he was called out because it looked like the umpires felt like he did go further than three feet to avoid being tagged out of the baseline that the runner creates his own baseline. is what actually happens, but when you watch the play, Derek Barton didn't wow. really do anything. He just kind of kind of spun to the ground. He spun, fell, and was just a little bit on the grass. But exactly. Now, 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 see, did he go three feet yeah. from the baseline to avoid being tagged? No, he just kind of. And the question is, but he did there after he got up. But after you get up, you're not trying to avoid being tagged. Right. But he was called out, and Ryan Sweeney was just just out. He wasn't called out. He was just out. For interference? No. no there was no interference. At first, no, at first base. Remember, he was just out. Well, the, the greatest shot, and maybe we can go back to it, is after the play finished, you had Bob Davidson and Alfonso Morales standing and looking at each other. Which pretty much tells the story yeah. right there. Suzuki on a 3 1 pitch walk. So, one out base runner, it's Suzuki, and here's Eric Chavez. Well, a nice round of applause for Eric, as expected. Just 30 at bats last year for Chavez. Played in eight games. And he is going to DH a lot if he can stay healthy. Well, we talked on Saturday, Ray, during our telecast during the exhibition game. The rosters had not been set, and we said, hey, there are surprises sometimes that happen with rosters. And we did not realize that really we were what we were quite in for when it comes to surprises is the A's let Jack Cusco or at least designated him for assignment. There's a decent chance he will stay in the A's organization. We hope he does, but we were surprised by that move. Putting a fastball from Phoenix and then it just ran back, painted on the corner to Xavi, and that quickly three pitches, three strikes. So the Eric Chavez, you know, he he's got something to work on again as we start the season tonight. He did not have one game DHing in spring training. Played first, but at third and short for maybe three three innings. But it was expected that Jack Cus was going to be the DH. Now when they made the move, I designated him for assignment. If he's not claimed on waivers by another club, then he has the option of declaring free agency, which means he voids his contract. And the only way he can get paid what he signed for would be to go to AAA, and I'd say it's a good chance to go to AAA, and rightfully so because injuries happen, things happen, and Jack's AAA getting at bats, then there's a chance that he could be back here possibly sooner than later. Mark Ellis, a bouncer toward Lopez at third. He'll go to second side, retired. A one-out walk, nothing else for the A's. We're headed to the third inning from the Coliseum, 2-0 Seattle. Ladies and gentlemen, it's time for the Pepsi Sports Highlights.
Top of the third and top of the order for the Mariners. Ichiro Suzuki, Sean Figgins, Casey Kochman against Ben Sheets. Run in the first, run in the second for Seattle. Ichiro popped out to Kuzmin off, leading off the ball game. Sharply into the seats. And that's one of those where you hope everybody's okay. Well, you always hope everybody's okay. Not a lot of time for the fans to react. Is that one shot into the seats? Nitro well, starting in another season of at least 200 hits. <laughs> Are you guaranteeing that? <laughs> I would say if he's healthy, he plays the season without being injured, then yes, he will have 200 plus hits when the season's over. Well, he's played nine years in the major leagues. Had 200 hits, at least 200 hits in every season. He's been an all-star in every season. And he's won a gold glove in every season. So his 10th year, five of those nine times, he's had 220 hits. Last year, 225. And remember, he doesn't like to walk. He just swung at a pitch over his head. But he will swing the bat. He makes great contact. Twenty six stolen bases last year. That number down a little bit from years past. Sharply hit and into center field. So Ichiro has his first hit in 2010. Well, in-depth sports news for the Bay Area fan. Go deep with Sportsnet Central tonight at 10.30 on Comcast Sportsnet Bay Area. Busy night for Scott Reese and Damon Andrews. And all the highlights from opening day around Major League Baseball. Who's going to win the NCAA championship game tonight? Duke and Butler. And tomorrow night, the Stanford women will play for the NCAA championship against UConn. So we wish Stanford women good luck. Sort of got their hands full, though. UConn women have won 77 consecutive games. Need Stanford to pull the upset tomorrow night. Good pitch there by Sheets. He thought it was a strike, but Tim Cheetah said a little bit inside. 1 0 to Sean Figgins. All right, this is the situation the Mariners were drooling about all offseason since they signed Sean Figgins. He threw at first, Figgins at the play. They have reason to be excited about these two top guys in the order. Well, it's just a, a matter of where they're going to hit, whether each row, each row could move down. He could move in a 3 4 spot yep. if, if they wanted him to, but he well, I said he wanted to stay as a leadoff hitter. He's been in that spot for his career in Japan as well as the United States. And Figgins, a very patient hitter, he's a switch hitter. If each row decides he does want to move. It was a four-year, $36 million deal that Sean Figgins signed to come to Seattle. To play second base. Spent a lot of time at third base with the Angels. And in center field, he played really any place Mike Sosha wanted to play him. Very strong arm, so that's not going to be a problem playing second base. A much shorter throw for him. There goes Ichiro. Pitches a bit high. Throw to second base. Not in time. Stolen base for Ichiro. The pitch was high, so the count three and one. Well, Ichiro, a very good jump. Strong throw by Kurt Suzuki. Just a little bit high, and he's going to be safe anyway. And I think with Figgins, Ichiro might be wanting to run more. He did not run last year as much. But now they throw it. There he goes. The throw to third. Got him. Figgins walks. The pitch was high again. But Kurt Suzuki throws out Ichiro Suzuki. Well, you don't see Suzuki argue too much. But he but was in disagreement here a little bit. Thought he got his foot in and he was wrong. Who's put the tag down right on the bag. And Kurt Suzuki, a very strong throw, accurate, took his time. Throw arrived 
He thought he got his foot in, but it looked like Coos had the, his glove down and he slid right into it. So it was a walk for Figgins. So that's the third walk he by Sheets. Unless Suzuki thought he missed him, but that looked like at that point he had it. Casey Kochman had an RBI double in the first inning. Well, it looks like Kurt Suzuki's going to have his hands full. <laughs> and he's not the only catcher that's <laughs> yeah, going to have his right. hands full. Kochman double was to deep right center field. Well, last year the Seattle Mariners won 85 games, but they scored the fewest runs in the American League. Just 640 total runs, less than four runs per game. So if they want to take that next jump, they realistically will need to get up over 700 runs scored, and they will be a team that creates runs. They still don't have a, a lot of home run hitters on their team. In fact, the guy who hit the most last year, Russ Brandon, I think he hit 31. He is gone. Smith Cleveland. The guys they picked up, Bradley, Kochman, they're not real big home run hitters. Remember, Casey Kochman was traded to the Atlanta Braves when the Angels got Mark Teixeira. And of course, Teixeira went on to sign a free agent contract with the Yankees. Now they have Kenry Morales. There goes Figgins. The pitch is high. Suzuki's throw sails into center field. Figgins up, and he's on the move, and he's going to go to third. So a stolen base and another error at Kurt Suzuki. So Figgins at third, the infield comes in. Now Ben using the high leg kick, and of course when a catcher sees that, he realizes he has to really let it go. And unfortunately, you have to respect the power of Kochman. So the center fielder Rajay Davis playing. Shot are a little bit too deep for that. See what happens here. Figgins tagging and he's coming home. Bucks throw to the plate is there. And Figgins just got in with a slide. Very close play. Buck made a pretty good throw. But Suzuki got the tagged out just a little late. And it's a sacrifice fly and another run for the Mariners. Now batting, number 15, Milton Bradley. Travis Buck, it's surprising he made as strong as throw as he did. He got a little bit turned around, but the very strong throw, it did short hop Kurt Suzuki, and once that happened, that's how Figgins was able to get around him. Well, Kurt Suzuki deserves a lot of credit for even catching that yeah. ball. Watch the short hop. That's a very difficult play. And he could not have stayed on the plate on that one to help himself. So Kochman gets his second RBI. Slide by Figgins. So three nothing Mariners. And the story in this game early is Sean Figgins. The sharp curve from Sheet stays outside. Two and two. Milton Bradley walked in the first inning. So Figgins two walks. Two stolen bases. It's caused an error each time, and he scored twice. Well, that's the key. The, the main thing is let him make him hit him his way on instead of walking him. And he's going to take pitches. He's going to be selective. And once he gets on, we saw him with the Angels, and he will continue with the Mariners. And that is run consistently. Three and two to Bradley. 62 pitches for Ben Sheets with one out here, making two outs here in the third. Swing and a miss. There's a good Sheets fastball. So Bradley strikes out, second strikeout for Ben Sheets. A run for Seattle. They lead 3 0. Ladies and gentlemen, it's time for the Aquafina water break.
MLB.TV. Baseball everywhere. And if you want to be reminded, and we will remind you often that this is tonight the first of 145 games. Comcast Sports Net California and everyone in HD. High definition. So those of you who are fortunate to have high def, you know what we're talking about. If you don't, HD is definitely the way to go. And on that play where Derek Barton was tagged with a glove, not the ball, you could really see it in HD. Yeah. How clear it was. And you, you could also it. see that there may be more to that play yeah. than the umpire's ruling, and we're going to tell you what we think or why we think he may have been called out. Now watch. Does Derek Barton sort of give up on the play and start heading toward the dugout? So he thinks he's out, starts going toward the dugout, and indeed he does. Now, that is why he was called out, and I'll tell you why. It's the rule, it says. Under baseball rule 7.08, any runner who, after reaching first base, leaves the baseline heading for his dugout or his position, believing that there's no further play, may be declared out if the umpire judges that the act of the runner to be considered abandoning his efforts to run the bases. Now, I know that may be a little confusing, but the point is, is he did abandon his effort to run the bases because he ran toward the dugout thinking he was out. Well, and unfortunately, when he went down to the ground, he caught, he felt that he was tagged. Exactly. He did not know That's he, right. Figgins didn't have the ball in his glove. So he's and, saying, I'm, I'm out, I'm going to the dugout. Yeah. But as soon as he does that, then he's out, and the umpire but, called him out. But what's the excuse for no call at first base on Marin Sweeney? I do not have a rule for that. <laughs> <laughs> and we won't say what we think <laughs> the reason, but, but there's no call. It was just flat out no call on Ryan Sweeney. So that's a, that's a good lesson for a base runner, but you, you sort of understand Derek Barton's point. He felt something on his back, and he thought it was the ball in the glove, but it was just the glove. The three steps that he took toward the dugout was the reason why he was called out. Three and two to Cliff Pennington. One out here in the third. There's the high fastball, and that's a tough pitch to hit with this man, Felix Hernandez. Well, we talked about Sean Figgins kind of zoning down and taking the pitch that's up, and that's what you have to do. You cannot, even though you know you're pretty good chance you're going to get a fastball to him, so you still have to be selected, zoned down, knowing that if it's up there, especially letters or above, it's going to be very tough to make contact. Top of the order, Rajay Davis, who had a base hit in the first inning. And a chopper off the plate, and Hernandez fielded. Davis beat the throw. That hit is the only hit for the A so far. Good curveball. You don't want to see is guys like Hernandez, really good pitchers where they you can kind of tell they start getting in a groove, start getting a rhythm going. And you're starting to see that a little bit here with Felix Hernandez. Good curve, strike three call. Three strikeouts for Hernandez and nothing for the A's in the bottom of the third.
fourth inning, the Mariners with a 3 0 lead over the A's. Ken Griffey Jr., Jose Lopez, and Franklin Gutierrez against Ben Sheets. Single runs in each of the first three innings for Seattle. Griffey bounced out to end the first inning, and then to second baseman Mark Ellis. Side and it's a four pitch walk to Griffey. So that is walk number four by Sheets in the ball game. Now batting number four. It's time now for a trivia okay, question. Okay. It is brought to you by AT&T. Who was the last Oakland starting pitcher to make his A's debut as the opening day starter? Right. You can have that one. Well, was it Dave Stewart? He started no, in Boston. No. He was, I think it was after that. Oh. Suzuki crossed up a little bit on a pitch that started outside and came back, and Zook was able to handle it more like a, a two seamer that started outside and came back. Of course, nobody at second base, so only one side is going. Watch Zook go out and then come back and get the ball. And then immediately out to have a visit with his pitcher. Remember, Kurt Suzuki just caught Ben Sheets in spring training maybe four times. But made sure the time Ben pitched in a major league game, he was behind the plate. Ninety-six RBIs last year for Jose Lopez. He drills that one left field, but Buck is there. A couple steps over and back, and he's got it. One out here in the fourth inning. Number 21, Franklin Gutierrez. So that'll bring up Franklin Gutierrez. So Travis Buck in left field. A bit of a surprise, but Travis Buck had a good spring. Yeah, with Jack Cuss not on the roster. Travis Buck on the roster and starting in left field tonight. You see the note on A's left fielders over the years? Did you see that? A's have had a different starting left fielder on opening day for 11 straight years. <laughs> and whether it's Travis Buck or Rajay Davis, it's going to be. It would have been different. Yeah. yeah, that's right. The streak would have gone on even with Rajay Davis. But some interesting names, and there they are Shannon Stewart. Back in 07. Remember Emil Brown in 08? Yeah. Eric Burns, 2004. He's on the Mariners dugout at Holiday last year, of course. That one's going to get through into left field by Franklin Gutierrez. Two on and one out for Rob Johnson, who homered in the second. Two former A's here, and Mike Sweeney and now, buddy, number 32. Eric Burns. Rob Johnson. They'll keep the bench alive. They'll keep the clubhouse alive. Yes, they will. Mike Sweeney, quite frankly, was not expected to make the team, but he did. It's a little bit of an interesting roster as far as the Seattle Mariners go. If you look at it, they have, they're carrying just 11 pitchers, so six relievers, no left-handed relievers. They have just one backup infielder. They really have two designated hitters mm -hmm. in Sweeney and Griffey. I mean, guys who, they're designated hitters. They're not going to play That's anywhere right. else unless an absolute emergency. Well, Mike Sweeney could play first. Yeah. But uh, if, if he's a tough lefty and maybe Namakamatsu wants Casey Kochman to not play. Mike will not play a lot. Definitely won't catch, which he uh, started out as a catcher of the Royals. 
But I think one may have something to do with the other. If you think about it, you have two DHs, you probably need an extra position player. And thus you maybe carry one less relief pitcher. Those teams carry seven relievers. Seattle with just six. These things could change as the year goes on. I remember at one time there were four starting pitchers and five relievers, and that was it. Nine pitchers on the staff. There's the four starters. Made about 40 starts a year and 300 innings. So there was a couple relievers <laughs> that weren't pitching much, That's I would right. imagine. Stays one and two to Rob Johnson. This is what Johnson did in the second inning. Two outs and nobody aboard. Now that's a 3 1 fastball. He just challenged him a little bit away, but extension by Johnson, no doubt. Carried very well into the seats. Wilson. And I think Ben Sheets upset the ball came back. Maybe too much over the plate. Could be two. Pennington has it. Steps on the bag. Double play. Sheets gets the double play grounder. The Mariners do not score. Bottom of the fourth coming up. Derek Buck will lead it off. Who was the last Oakland starting pitcher that made his A's debut as the opening day starter? The knuckleballer, Tom Candiotti, did it back in 1998. Well, next year when he asked the question, we'll say Ben Sheets. Ben Sheets. Mariners three and the A's nothing here in the bottom of the fourth inning. What's the whole idea of trying to? King Felix and get his pitch count up is not working. <laughs> He's throwing strikes. Well, that's the thing with a guy so good. If you get behind in the count, it's a strikeout guy. He has three strikeouts so far, one walk. He's given up one hit. Well, he is using his curveball a lot more. He struck out Raji last inning with a curveball. He has a good fastball to top out. 96, 97 miles per hour, but I should throw the curveball too. Outside three. Barton was a walk machine in spring training. He had 22 walks in 21 spring training games. Inside and it's a leadoff walk, so a base runner for the A's against Hernandez. His second walk. Now batting, right fielder number 21, Ryan Sweeney. So here's Ryan Sweeney. Sweeney hit into that in a bizarre 4-3 double play. If 
was indeed a 4-3 double play. <laughs> we're not quite sure. Double play nonetheless. Bounce toward second. Figgins, Wilson, and that's a double play. So just like that, two outs. Well, Derek Barton did it. Uh, now, Manny. His first Derek event kind of rolled over. Derek and Ryan. same with Ryan Sweeney Sweeney his first time. And now this one as well. So Phoenix Hernandez turned the ball over a little bit, taking a little bit off. And instead of guys trying to stay back and go to the opposite field, with that rollover effect, the ground ball to the right side, the left-handed hitter, and very quickly get the double play. So a five-pitch walk. And a one pitch double play. So Kuzminov hits with two outs. His first at bat as an athletic, he grounded short. Slowly hit. Lopez charges on the run, throws out Kuzminov, and that will do it. Fifth inning coming up from the Coliseum on opening night. Three nothing, Mariners. Well, visit the A's page at CSNCalifornia.com to vote in tonight's poll. You make the call. Who will be the 2010 A's most valuable player? Suzuki, Bailey, Sheets, Kuzminov, or Chavez? Look for the answers in tonight's post-game show. So go to CSNCalifornia.com. Fifth inning, it'll be Jack Wilson, Ichiro Suzuki, and Sean Figgins. 9-1-2 and two for the Mariners. Uh, tonight from the scoreboard and the speed gun has not been working throughout this first part of the game. I'm sure it's not intentional. Some pitchers will ask that they not show the speed. Check a swing. Pitch is high. Three and one. Jack Wilson fly to center field. Wilson part of the Make over the roster. She is starting nine for the Mariners. Coming over last year, a mid season trade from the Pirates. He's retired on a foul pop. One out. Time now for Subway Eat Fresh Ask Glenn and Ray, where you log on to CSNCalifornia.com to post your question. But let's listen to tonight's question. Hi, it's Hoshona from San Jose. I have a question. What is your favorite memory of opening day? Well, Ray, you've been with the A's a long time. Give us your favorite. Well, I, I've said it before, and I, I, I would say 73, 74, when uh, they, uh, of course, the Vietnam War, and they had everybody turn out the lights, and everybody had a, some sort of a candle, a flashlight, and just lit up this place. And of course, that's when the upper deck. Oh, really? Everything was, and, and especially have everything turned, all the lights uh -huh. turned out, and so it was. Uh, that probably stands out, but it, but every every opening day, 
or night, whatever it might be, is is always special just because it is beginning and see the, the bunting up and you hope that's there in October as well uh, for the postseason. But it's just a, a great time of the year to get another season started. Would you say as a player that you, you feel a little bit different yeah. opening day or opening night than you do other games? You really can't wait to get it over. It, it is because there's, there's a lot of a lot of hype, a lot of people talking about it's opener and everybody wants to be a part of it. But in reality, it's it is another game, but it happens to be the first, and you kind of feel once you get past the first game, then everything can settle down and you want to try to get the first hit. You don't want to see the zeros on the board with the uh, the batting average stay at zero too much. Mark Ellis handles the one hopper from each year, two outs. And there's nothing wrong with going two for four, or three for four opening night. Either. No, no. Now that I was remembered remember the nine, opening nights in Cleveland. Or opening, we played day games on the opener there. The old stadium, 75,000 seat capacity, and we had a whole bunch of people. Yeah. That's at about 10% of our total attendance for the year. Yeah, that. that Second home game was always the problem. <laughs> and you notice too, you, you get back east, they have the opener with an off day the next day. In the uh -huh. event, the actual opening day game, night game, whatever it might be, is rained out or snowed out, they, they want to have a, an extra day for it. But this is what Ben Sheets had been wanting to do with Sean Figgins. He did it in the first inning, got ahead 0 and 2, and ended up walking him. And just trying to keep him off the bases, and that's. Uh, Again, 0 and 2. Jerry Blevins starting to get loose in the A's bullpen. He's been Sheets' pitch count. He's getting up a little bit high. Good pitch, strike three called. Figgins do it. That's the third strikeout for Ben Sheets. Kurt Suzuki's going to lead it off in the bottom of the fifth. The A's trailing. Bring it up. Xfinity presents Friday Family Packs. Get four tickets, four hot dogs, four Pepsis, and four bags of peanuts, all for just $50. This special deal is available for every Friday game, including fireworks nights and games against the Red Sox, Giants, and more, but only as supplies last. Get more information and order online at OaklandAthletics.com. Bottom of the fifth inning, Kurt Suzuki, Eric Chavez, Mark Ellis against Hernandez. He's trying to get something going against the big right hander. Well, the A's knew when Felix Hernandez joined the Mariners. When they first saw him, they said, oh, we're going to have to face this guy a lot. You just hope that the rotation when you see the Mariners, he's not in it. But, of course, in the opener, he is. And let's see. He would pitch Saturday, so the A's probably miss him next week, hopefully. <laughs> Three starts at the age of 23 or younger. The 
Mariners signed Hernandez when he was 16 years old as an undrafted free agent. That was 2002. He will be 24 later this week. He was in the big leagues at the age of 19. And he was good immediately, as Ray just said. Well, the A's Mariners facing each other 19 times each season. You know, you got a pretty good chance of seeing six different series, three and three. You got a chance to see him if you're unlucky six times. You start looking at certain pitchers around the league, Zach Brinkley and other that you kind of hope when you play the Royals you don't see him. I'd like to see him, but not on now. Sean Figgins has it. But Kurt Suzuki's retired for the first down. And that's why the Mariners were hopeful and it would take a, probably a month before Cliff Lee is available, but and they traded and made the trade, and Cliff Lee came over from Philadelphia. And they felt they had a pretty good one two punch. And Hernandez and Lee. But that's on hold for a little while. Well, I was curious over the weekend, kind of looking at rosters as they shaped up for all the teams around, just the American League, but National League as well. They started jotting down players that were starting the season on the disabled list. And then I realized that. Felt like I was jotting down an all star roster. Figgins takes care of Eric Chavez for the second out. How about the starting pitchers on the disabled list to start the season? Cliff Lee, Eric Bedard, Dice K. Matsusaka, Scott Casimir, Ted Lilly, Joe Blanton, Jeff Francis, and Gil Mesh. <laughs> That's just the starters. Closers starting the season on the DL. Joe Nathan, Brad Lidge, Kerry Wood, Houston Street. And we haven't even got to the position player. Ian Kinsler, Russ Brannion, Lance Burton, Alex Gordon, Freddie Sanchez, Carlos Beltran, Jose Reyes. All those guys I just named are starting the season on the disabled. Now some will be back. Within a couple weeks, check out the payroll of those well, disabled guys. You That's could, factored in too. Yes, you could take that a step further. The A's have five players starting the season on the DL, but it's not quite no. in the uh, category of the financial end of it. It's but certainly the Coco Chris. That's a that's a blow to the A's. Michael Works. I think what's too bad about Coco Chris is, well, obviously, it happened. Two nights before, three nights before the opener. He was only going to play three innings over in San Francisco, anyways, and it happened early in that game. But it sounds like you're talking three weeks a month and quite possibly six weeks. Yeah, it you, just depends. Yeah, it usually takes a, a fracture six weeks to heal, and I'm speaking from experience because I've had a few of them myself. Yes, so it usually have. takes six weeks, but they're talking. These uh, reports three to eight weeks for Coco Chris. It's too bad. Joey Devine, Trevor Cahill also starting the season on the disabled list. Three two pitch, a curveball, and Ellis takes it. Well, this is how Coco Chris got hurt. This is Friday night. The head first slide in, and he said his hand, he felt it was safe, but it was the slap tag by Uribe that caused the damage. Because it looked like maybe his fingers had hit the bag. But he said actually his hands were up, but you could see the hard tag. There's a hard tag, yeah. Applied by Uribe, and you know, it was unintentional, it didn't do it to hurt him, it just had, had to make a quick tag because of the jump Coco got. Trevor Cahill shoulder, but it's his left shoulder, not his right, not his throwing shoulder. Travis Buck trying to do something with the two out walk to Mark Ellis. The same double he hit off Felix in 07 in his first major league hit at Safeco Field when the A's opened in Seattle. Travis is on the roster for the fourth consecutive year. Swings over top of the breaking ball, 0 and 2. And there 
Hits the fastball and on three pitches, Buck strikes out. Side retired. Strikeout number four for Felix Hernandez. Sixth inning coming up. Three nothing Seattle. Ladies and gentlemen, go to the sales. change things speedy oil change and tune-up your oil change tune-up and smog experts the pitching change is Jerry Blevins the left-hander comes on so Ben Sheets in his Oakland A's debut goes five innings and Blevins takes over here in the six he'll face Kochman Bradley and Griffey now the tall one Jerry Blevins last year 20 appearances the six walks and 22 innings, 22 and a third. So of the three runs that Sheets gave up, two were earned. He walked four, struck out three. So Ben Sheets will not get a W in his first start. We hope he gets a no decision. Kotchman has had a couple of RBIs tonight, a double and a sacrifice fly. Breaking pitch, it's a strikeout for Blevins. Well, Jerry Blevins, along with uh, a couple other lefties during spring training. Now, Bradley Kelby at one in particular, but this big curveball. Jerry Blevins using his experience that he has had in the big leagues and long, lanky. Delivery and he has been very good, especially very tough against lefties. Now the switch hitters come into play. Milton Bradley turns around. Bradley a walk and a strikeout. Excuse me, Ray. Evans also one who's picked up a cut fastball. 94 pitches for Ben Sheets. Bradley hitting in the cleanup spot for Seattle. Good fastball outside corner. It's one and two. It's a great uh, pitch selection there. Fastball pushed him off the plate and then painted the outside corner. Hit Blevins. Four hits for Seattle, just one for the Athletics. Disappointing things about opening night is if you run up against a, a starting pitcher, a pitcher who is as good as Felix Hernandez is, it could be a downer for the 30,000 yeah. plus on hand tonight for the season opener. 
Still time left. I always felt like it's opening night. You're right. It's only one game. But it's great to win. Sure it is. It's a good way to get started. Outside, he walked. Them. So Bradley walks for the second time. But you know, you watched the national game last night where Red Sox came back and beat the Yankees. You watched the Texas Rangers today come back and win a game in the bottom of the night. There, the place was Kane going crazy. Here. Full house. Griffey, a ground out and a walk. Ace pitchers have walked five tonight. Junior's going to have to get a new piece of lumber. Ray, you remember opening night, 1989, right? It was right here at the Coliseum. A's and Mariners and Ken Griffey Jr. Yeah. His first game, he stepped in in his first at bat against Dave Stewart. He got a double. His first major league game. Left center. Yeah. 1989. He was, from what I understand, really not expected to make the team that year. He came to spring training as a non roster invitee. He had played in just 130 minor league games up until that point. But he had a great spring and made the team. Hit 16 home runs his rookie season of 1989. And well, that number just kept climbing and climbing. His first major league hit right here at the Coliseum. I think the, the biggest question how much the wear and tear of the Oak King Dome, which is artificial service, took it's on his body. And of course, they went to Cincinnati and came home last year, second year that he's been back into Seattle where it all started. See so many guys who had great careers in one city go elsewhere and then come back in the case of Omar Garcia Parra. He reaches for that one, hits it well to right, but it's in the ballpark. Sweeney gets back, reaches up, and makes the catch. Garcia Parra signed a one day contract with the Boston Red Sox so he could uh, yep. retire in a Red Sox Bobby. uniform. Number four, Jose Lopez. So two outs for Jose Lopez with Milton Bradley still at first. Lopez a strikeout and a line out and a line drive to left field his last at bat. Lopez is I don't know free swinger I, I, I don't know if he's he doesn't walk a lot, but I don't know that he's necessarily a guy that just swings at everything and chases balls. He just doesn't take a lot of strikes. It's just his style. Milton Bradley, who on Saturday was running on a stolen base attempt and injured his quad and had to come out of the game. But we're throwing over paying a lot of attention, so the scouting report must be that he's okay. I think he's going to take off even before the pitch is thrown, which he's already done. He's That's tried that one first inning. Did not work. Bradley has a short lead at first. Pop foul back. Hernandez enjoying the three run lead. Pretty good read there by Jerry Blevins as Bradley at least looked like he's taking off towards second, and Jerry Blevins with the leg coming straight up, able to throw to first and at least push it back towards the back. Her ball drops in for a strike, one and two. Hard this curveball is thrown. This is great effort. Follow through and brings it right over the heart of the plate. Backdoor curveball starts outside, bring it back over the middle part. 
And does it again. This one breaks to the inside corner. Lopez strikes out. A couple of strikeouts for Jerry Blevins. Hayes needs some action as we head to the bottom of the six. Down 3 0. Starting off for a Coors Light Freeze Game. Coors Light Freeze Game brought to you by Frost Brew. Coors Light, the world's most refreshing beer. Bottom of the sixth inning. These fans looking for something to cheer about and maybe a start. There's something here in the bottom of the sixth. Cliff Pennington, a line drive, base hit. Maybe it's the number two. Jumped on a first pitch fastball, only a second AB, and he swung and missed a similar pitch, a little bit higher than his first at bat to strike out in his first one. So starts this inning with a solid base hit. And he's got a batting average now. Yes, he did. 500. Top of the order, Rajay Davis, a foul ball. Self defense trying to get out of the way, and ball happened to run up and in and hit the bat. Single and a strikeout for Rajay tonight. Bounced in the hole. Wilson, nice play to get the out at second base. Just did not hit it crisply enough. Here's the middle infielder cheating a little bit towards the middle, but this ball in the hole. But Jack Wilson, good range ball, slowed down a bit. And a very good play throwing back across his body to get the runner at second. The A's will play the Seattle Mariners 19 times, so A's fans will see a lot of Jack Wilson. Spent his whole career in the National League. He is a terrific shortstop. As Eduardo Ramirez starts to loosen up. The Mariners should have a very good defensive ball club. Don't know how many runs they'll score. After the rotation has some question marks, they will catch them. Off speed pitch, swing and a miss. One and one to Bart, who has reached out a fielder's choice and walked. Ryan Sweeney. 67 pitches for Hernandez. So this pitch count pretty good right now here in the sixth inning. 
Too good. Not great news. Rajay takes off. Pitches low. Throw to second. Not in time. Stolen base. Rajay Davis. Number one. Hey, you like to pitch, pick a good pitch to run on, and Rajay did. He got the curveball. Johnson made it a much closer play than perhaps what it should have been. Rajay, great jump. So just a little bit late. And Rajay sliding to the outside part of the bag with Jack Wilson taking the throw in front of the bag. He did that trying to avoid dry fighting straight, straight in into the bag. Bounces away from Johnson and Davis will go to third. Crossed him up. Johnson was lucky to get a glove on the ball as a little mixed communication. Probably got to get a pass ball, but he went inside and expected the ball outside. Wow, pitch. Wow, wow. Huh. And they blame Felix for the uh, the crosser. Three-one pitch inside, and it's a walk. A couple of base runners for the A's here in the sixth. Sean White starts to loosen up. Without the baseball in the bullpen, but see, guys are starting to move around down there. First pitch to Sweeney. Dropped in for a strike. Sweeney is hit into a double play twice. Both times he has hit a ground ball to the second baseman. This one up the middle, pass to Dowdy Wilson, and the A's are on the board. Davis scores, Barton stops at second, and it's three to one. Got another ground ball, but this time a little bit more aggressive swing from Ryan Sweeney. And Rajay Davis speed like Sean Figgins, a stolen base, the wild pitch gets him to third. And Ryan Sweeney, the curveball, as Phoenix Hernandez falling off the mound. Could not handle the ball up the middle, and Jack Wilson himself could not. Wilson hitting the ground hard. Maybe he thought if he comes up with the ball, Figgins could get a four six second. Run with Rajay was going to score anyway. It's nice, get the fans involved a little bit. So the first RBI of the season for the Athletics goes to Ryan Sweeney. Ziegler gets up. And Kevin Kuzminoff has a chance to do some more damage here in the bottom of the sixth inning. January 16th is the date the A's made the trade to get Kevin Kuzminoff from the Padres. Giving up Scott Hairston and Aaron Cunningham. There the ball Coos hit on Saturday against the Giants, yeah. the right center. And we wondered how well he hit it. He said he crushed it. <laughs> and it didn't quite. Not the answer we wanted to hear. No, he wanted no, to hear. No. Not the answer he wanted to give us, probably. But he's familiar because he played in San Diego with the ball. Doesn't carry it very well in the huge Petco Park. Right now, a gapper in the right center would look very, very good. And that would probably score two.
one and two now. It's getting there. He's making him work this inning. Four walks. And probably the surprising one was the Mark Ellis 3 2 curveball. And the 3 to nothing lead. Hit toward third. Lopez will step on the bag, throw the first down the run, and the tag by Kochman, and he got it. So Jose Lopez does a nice job at third, and the A's get one. 3 1 Seattle after six. April 7th is the season's first double play Wednesday. That's day after tomorrow. First pitching is against the uh, Seattle Mariners, 705. And you can get Plaza Reserve and outfield tickets for $2 and hot dogs for just a dollar. And it's all courtesy of Bart. Order tickets online now at OaklandAthletics.com or call 877 493 ball Double play Wednesday. That's Wednesday night, Thursday afternoon, the series finale. The A's will head down to Anaheim and said seven of the first ten games the A's play will be against the Seattle Mariners. Yep. Four here, three next week. So, they see Sean Figgins. What they see? Phoenix Fernandez sitting right where he's sitting. Right there. He does. <laughs> Gutierrez, Johnson, and Wilson. Bottom three for the Mariners. A full day. Opening day on Major League Baseball today. So the game last night, Yankees and Red Sox. Everybody else open today except Baltimore and Tampa Bay. They will open their season tomorrow. Oh and two to Franklin Gutierrez. Quick look at some of the things that happened around baseball on opening day. The Rangers. Won their game five to four for the Blue Jays. It was quite a game. Sean Markham, the starting pitcher for the Blue Jays today, took a no hitter into the seventh inning. Had the lead. Nelson Cruz hit a three run homer to tie the game in the eighth inning. Pennington grabs the line drive. One out here in the seventh. Rob Johnson will hit. Rob Johnson. So Cruz tied it, and then the Rangers scored two of the ninth after the Blue Jays had grabbed the lead. So the Rangers an exciting opening day in their ballpark. They won five to four. Salta Lamacchia had the game-winning hit. White Sox shut out the Indians six nothing. 
in Chicago. Mark Burley over Jake Westbrook. They've got a pretty good pitching staff. Yeah, the White Sox, Jake Peavy healthy, and Mark Burley, of course. John Danks. Gavin Floyd, good, good pitcher. Got five good ones. Burley, seven innings, just three hits. Tigers beat the Royals eight to four. Came back in that game. Tigers scored six runs in the seventh inning. So a no decision for Verlander. And a no decision for Zach Greinke. Rob Johnson on the walk. Now so six Number walks two, now by eight Jack pitchers. Wilson. Watched the Cardinals and the Reds today for a while. And national telecast. And Albert Pujols, his first two at-bats. Home run. Wilson's fast for the first. And Barton can't handle it, and everybody's safe. It's going to be a tough scoring uh, decision because Jack Wilson got down the line very quickly, and Jerry Blevins with the ball back to him, he was trying to push the ball was Wilson. And just a little bit of a double clutch at Blevins and then unloaded the ball and just off the glove. That's a very tough play on a first baseman to try to avoid having the runner hit your shoulder as he's coming by. But I think the A's were lucky that that ball hit Jack Wilson. Otherwise, it may still be rolling. We still have not heard the ruling as we get a meeting on the mound. So Albert Pools, Homer's first two at bats, led the majors in home runs last year. Roy Halladay, his first start in the National League. He was very good. Seven innings, one run, nine strikeouts. The Phillies beat the Number Nationals 11 to 1. Hero, Suzuki. The young man in Atlanta, though, Jason Hayward, is going to be the talk of baseball early on. He's just a very young man. His first major league at bat today in Atlanta. He hit a bomb for a home run. I mean, it was a shot. He's just 20 years old. Jason Hayward. The Braves beat the Cubs today 16 to 5. <laughs> this guy's, have you seen him? He looks yeah. just like Fred McGriff. Yeah. He is big, strong, left handed hitter. Sliced foul on two. I can hear Ron Santo right now during the call with Pat Hughes on radio. Oh, no, oh, no. 16 runs. He's saying no for Carlos Zambrano, who gave up eight earned runs in an inning in the third today. And Carlos Zambrano not going to be happy. Good pitch. Strike three call. Big strike out there gets Ichiro for the second out. Fastball, maybe it had uh, too much of the play for each row. Number nine, Sean Piggins. But the ball started in and then it kind of sailed outside, away from, not outside, but away from each row, right down the middle. And that is a rare sight to see each row Suzuki take a strike three. And a great pitch by Jerry Blevins. Ray, it was a straight E3 on the Jack Wilson play. Two on, two out in a two run game here in the seventh. So this is a big at bat. A big guy for Blevins to get. Blevins reaches down, juggles it, throws the first side retire. So the Mariners strand a pair in the top of the seventh inning. And we've reached seventh inning stretch time. It's Seattle three and it's the A's one. And we're going to keep it right here. For a wonderful rendition of God bless America.
opening night at the Coliseum. Ray Fossey, Glenn Kuyper, you're watching the A's baseball here at Comcast Sportsnet, California. Seattle three and the A's one. Felix Hernandez back to work, 76 pitches, so he's got a little gas left in the tank, unfortunately. He'll face Suzuki, Chavez, and Ellis. Well, the important thing is for the A's to keep him right here. Bullpen will get the ball, just a matter of whether it's well, eighth or ninth inning for sure, but the A's can get to Felix Hernandez in this inning. Ben Sheets still on the bench. I'd like to see that from your starter. He's a little disappointed in himself, especially for the walks. Four walks, three strikeouts for Sheets, 94 pitches. I tell you, not a bad opening start for him, considering not pitched for 17 months. He will pitch again on Saturday in Anaheim. Have a jacket on. And that's Louisiana. <laughs> Pop up, and it's going to reach the seats. There is another game going on right now. It's the Angels and the Twins. Angels four, Twins three. That game at the top of the sixth inning. Down there. Twins and the Angels will play a four game series. Ooh, and that hit Kurt Suzuki, or did it hit the bat? Fortunately, the bat. the bat. Fortunately, the bat. All running up and in on Kurt Suzuki, and he backed off, and that's a danger as you start getting it that close to the hand that hit the knob of the bat. I guess yep. it did. Watch the, the knob right at the end of the bat. As he pulls it in, it hits right on the end. That's how close it came to hitting his hand. And you feel it in your hands, oh. too. Way out ahead of that. Pitch was up and in. Up on the beautiful new tarps on the That's right. third deck. Lopez to his left throws it back. One out here in the seventh. It's time now for our game summary, which is brought to you by McDonald's, the St. Mary's Men's We're Basketball Team throwing ceremony at first pitch. Some awards for Camp Harris, Andrew Bailey, and the two skippers. The action from the game, a home run by Rob Johnson, the catcher for the Seattle Mariners. One of their three runs. The A's run of the game. Knocked in by Ryan Sweeting, RBI single. That was in the sixth inning. We are now in the bottom of the seventh. 3 4 and 0 oh for Seattle. 1 3 and 3 for the Athletics. So the three airs. And that kind of stands out. Sean Figgins has been a big part of the problem for the Athletics tonight. So far, he's done exactly what the, the Mariners has, had hoped he would do when they signed him as a free agent. Strike call to Eric Chavez, who thought it was a little bit high. Johnny almost kind of learning how to hit all over again. Missing so much time the last couple of years. And all he has to think about now is hitting, it looks like. And, Plenty of time to try to figure it out. It's too bad Edgar Martinez isn't still with the Mariners because he can teach you what to do in between innings when you're the designated hitter. 121 games the last three seasons. In his career, Eric has 229 career home runs. Only three other. A's players have more home runs with the Oakland Athletics. McGuire, Jackson, and Conseco. T. 
He is all over the career leaderboards for Oakland. His 13th season. And unfortunately, when his career comes to an end, Ray, and hopefully he plays for a while yet, but I think you're always going to say, boy, if he could have stayed healthy, yeah. he would have been yeah. he would have been a star player his whole career. Yeah, the, the gold glove run would have continued. Yep. Been no reason to think otherwise. Up the middle, and Hernandez makes a nice play as he reaches down and grabs it. Two outs. Well, two outs, but also two very long at bats by Suzuki and Chavi. 91 pitches now for Felix, starting the inning 76. Now, I think Sean White, who was loosening up the arm last inning, is now throwing from the bullpen mound. No fly ball outs. Yep, that's right. That's amazing. He's got three double plays. That has helped him. The four strikeouts. Then I don't know that you would consider him a ground <laughs> ball pitcher. Well, the movement His ball is, yeah. is down, that's yeah. for sure. The movement. The curve ball is down, but but normally you have hitters swinging late and you get fly ball outs. Maybe not long fly ball, but he has kept the ball on the ground. And pretty good defense, uh, defensive infield to handle them. Second baseman last year, third baseman last year, Figgins. Lopez played second, and of course, Figgins third for the Angels last year. Three and one now to Mark Ellis, who has grounded out and walked. 263 average last year for Ellis. Pitch. Ellis takes the walk, and that is five walks for him. I think he thought he might have had it too. He, Ellie kind of sold a little bit as he went quickly in the first base. The hardest decision for a manager when to take out his pitcher. Well, Guy, if I have to say, yesterday a very special day. Of course, Easter Sunday, and down uh, Arizona, has been. Easter Sunday with the family and uh, celebrating our 40th wedding anniversary. So, congratulations to me. <laughs> You're a lucky man. <laughs> Wonderful wife, Carol. My wife, Carol, and uh, 40 years, 40th anniversary. So, do the math. 1970 to 2010. And she is out in the center field suite having a group of friends and uh, in for the evening, and I hope they get to cheer a little bit more than what they have so far. But Carol's a wonderful lady. She's put up with you for 40 years. Yeah, that's what I mean. Like I said, <laughs> she's a wonderful lady. <laughs> no, we love yeah. Carol. She's great. Well, let's give them something to cheer about. Yeah. So. Just a bit off the plate to Travis Buck. Buck a ground out to short and a strikeout. 0 for 2. You're not even 40 yet, are you? 40 years old? Or four. <laughs> 40 years old? No. Yeah. Well, I am 40 years old. Yeah. No, I'm a little bit behind you yeah. in the marriage column. Oh, foul. Would you like to uh, get married and within two months get run over at home plate? <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. And have to live with that for 40 years? No. no I would not <laughs> want to do that. You deserve better than that, I think. But see, you were better off having her there after it happened, right? That's true. Although, <laughs> Although you weren't a peach to be around. No, I wish there had been an MRI <laughs> to tell me that what was wrong with my shoulder, but that's the uh, advantage yeah. today of, oh, there's something wrong. Just a bit low. Hernandez is yeah, missing, not by much, but he's missing. That ball is down, but he will show at times some frustration. And he's he's been doing it this inning because he knows 
least he's probably thinking he could go into the eighth inning based on 76 pitches. Not anymore. Yeah, no, he's uh, he'd be lucky to get through this inning depending on what happens. And this at that. Ellis does not go. The pitch is low. Ball four. Well, here's your decision time for Don Wakamatsu. Pitching coach has already gone out. He has now walked six, and that is going to do it. So a two-out rally for the A's here in the bottom of the seventh, and what it's going to do is it's going to get Felix Hernandez out of the game. So the big right-hander goes six and two-thirds innings tonight. But when it's time for a change, think speedy. A's Baseball is brought to you by Toyota. Say yes to amazing deals on your favorite Toyotas. See your local Toyota dealer today. Toyota, yes. And by Xfinity, the next generation in home entertainment. Now available in the Bay Area and coming soon to the Central Valley. Felix Hernandez got the first two outs in the bottom of the seventh but could not get out of the inning. He walked Ellis. And then he walked Buck, and he is out of the game after 101 pitches. So it's now Sean White, who really had a terrific season last year for the Mariners out of their bullpen. Fastball low to mid 90s. He'll feature also a curveball, cutter, slider, and a changeup. Looks to use the fastball, not afraid to throw it, mostly outside though. So we'll see how he faces Cliff Pennington again, headed from the left side. Same with his last at bat. Went low. Pennington, a strikeout in the third, a single in the sixth. There's a baseball on the field. Now the left field A's have two guys warming up down there. Aggressiveness you like to see. Felix Hernandez was a little concerned as he jumped up on the top step. But the patience is good. Well, Finnington can be patient, but well, he knew he was going to get a fastball and he was trying to give the A's the lead. And that's what a three run home run would do. Two and one. Change up thrown right over the top, just like his fastball. That's a good take by Pennington.
Line drive, right field, each year old playing out of hot. Here comes the throw to the plate. It's cut off. It's a 3-2 game. Why? 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 Thank you, though. That ball was right on the line. It might not have been enough time. Because Mark Ellis got a tremendous read, and Mike Gallego was not going to hold him up, respecting the arm of Ichiro. But all this with two outs? All this happening after two quick outs on ground balls and then two walks by Phoenix? And two hits for Cliff Pennington. Now running, center field, now running. Hey, you get a better look here. See if this throw was indeed online. It looked like it was. It was. And why? I mean, it, the thing is, it, it might have been sinking a little bit. But if you hit the cutoff, man, guys aren't going to go to advance. So now a chance to tie it up. Buck at second, Pennington at first. So good speed on the bases. Maybe even take the lead with the ball in the gap. Rajay Davis is one for three. Line drive, base hit left field. Here comes Buck. The ball is kicked around in left field. And Buck will score. There's an out at third, but Buck scored in time to tie the game. Cliff Pennington was tagged out at third, but luckily Buck scored just ahead of Pennington getting tagged out, and we are all tied. A two out rally by the A's ties it at three. Top of the eighth inning, Rajay Davis, the RBI single that tied the game, and here it is. Rajay pulling the hands in, and Pennington going to third. Maybe to try to draw a throw, but when Bradley misplayed the ball, it was Jack Wilson, the shortstop, making the tag. But the important thing there, the hustle to score. Davis dives in. He got it. Rajay Davis. Pretty good five minute segment here for Rajay <laughs> Davis. Got a little slight slow jump on the ball as it was a big swing, but the ball didn't carry. Right. So Rajay did he with catch speed. it? Did he catch it, folks? What a great play. And watch him sell it. And Rajay sat up and, yeah, I caught it. He's tired. Base hit, running the bases, had to run out the outfield, make a spectacular catch. Rajay, little backhand. Fortunately, the ball ended up in his glove, and wow, he missed that. Yeah. 
One and one to Milton Bradley. Craig Breslow is the new pitcher. And Jerry Blevins, a nice two innings of work. Did walk a couple, but struck out three and kept the A's in the game, and now it's tied at three. Never say no. My name is Craig Breslow. Indeed it is. He was give me the baseball. He was hurt a little bit during spring training, but you know what he said? Come April the 5th, I'll be ready. And he did pitch in the latter part of spring training, but great pickup on the A's last year from the Twins. 77 appearances, top the list most of the season. Breslow pitched eight times against Seattle last year. Two and two to Bradley. Ken Griffey Jr. in the on deck circle. He's with one of the six, two of the seventh to tie up the game. Bradley hits with very high, shallow left field. It's going to be Travis Buck. He's got it. Two outs. Now we talked and we can still talk about it. You see Mark Lowe and Brandon Lee being over from the Blue Jays to solidify the bullpen of the Mariners. But I think even with Michael Wirtz and Joy Devine, Joy Devine did not pitch all of last year. Michael Wirtz started the season on the disabled list, but still, this is a very good bullpen. So you get the A's in this situation where they have the lead of the tie with a bullpen, pretty, pretty good chance to win the ballgame. Drops in one and one. There's some talk with the A's keep three lefties in the bullpen. But it's important right now that Levins and now Breslow against this packed lineup of lefties. Sweeney racing over, goes into a dive and he can't get it and rolls past him. Griffey will stop at second base with a two out double. So first hit of the year for Ken Griffey Jr. And Eric Burns speeding in to pinch run and the question is if Ryan Swinney plays this on one. I had no chance to catch the ball. He's fortunate. And he did come relatively close but still a tough play if he holds him to a single by catching the ball on one hop. Is that all Griff would have got? But we'll never know. Now it's Burns running at second and a pitching change. So Breslow's out. Ziegler's in. It is time for a change. Think speedy. Oil change and tune up your oil change. Tune up and smog experts. Coming in to pitch for the athletics.
22 of the game, biggest games of the season. Every game against the Giants, Yankees, Red Sox are included along with all season ticket holder benefits. For more information, log on to OaklandAthletics.com. Also call 510-638-GO-A's. That's the stacked pack. Burns the go-ahead run at second. Jose Lopez the hitter. Brad Ziegler the new pitcher for the A's. Lopez toward left center. The playable. Davis reaches up, makes the catch, side retired. A runner stranded for the Mariners. Bottom of the eighth coming up. It'll be Buck, Sweeney, and Kuzma on. Coming up after the ball game, and hopefully we'll give Damon a chance to talk about talk about a W here for the Athletics. They've scratched their way back to tie it up at three. Bottom of the eighth inning. Mariners go back to their bullpen. It's right-hander Brandon Lee. Brandon Lee. A little bit low to Barton, two and zero. Oh. Brandon Lee coming over in a tray for Brandon Morrow. Brandon Morrow went from the Mariners to the Blue Jays. Now we've seen Brandon Lee a fair amount with Toronto. He's got a great arm, throws very hard, good sinker, but he's a little erratic at times. He's had a chance to be a very good reliever. Here. Sinker slider changeup, fastball. Mid 90s, there's a good movement. And you know, with the Blue Jays, we're talking about trying to control the movement. Derek Barton, who has an excellent eye, two walks tonight. Swing and a miss. There's the good fastball with movement. Seattle must have thought. Highly ugly to give up Brandon Morrow's chance to be a pretty good pitcher as well. Ground good foul. This is where it's very tough on a hitter, and of course, Derek Martin has done a very good job this spring. A different type of player, almost like he feels now that he belongs here. Played very well in the spring, but he has to be selective but aggressive and get to pitch, do something with it. Outside, he walked it. Lead-off walk in the bottom of the eighth, and that's been very selective. So Derek Barton tonight, a ground ball, forced out in the first, and three walks. It's good on base percentage. I bet he's leading the lead. <laughs> Ryan Sweeney. So here's Ryan Sweeney. 
Lopez up even with the bag thinking bunt. When he's not bunting and he takes a strike. Well, this the old saying, do you have your third place hitter bunt? But I don't think the A's this year are going to have your typical third place hitter. It'd be more of maybe a lineup of who is pitching against the A's. And so with that in mind, maybe we would see an occasional sacrifice. Not this thing. Kevin Kuzminoff in the on deck circle. Sliced foul. One and two. Outfield playing Ryan Sweeney straight away and straight up. Now, center fielder Gutierrez a little bit over in left center, but Ryan Sweeney uses the whole field. And that's why hitting third, he can drive in a lot of runs going gap to gap. Off speed pitch floats way outside. Jack Wilson, and they're not going to get anybody. Two on and nobody out. If Wilson fields it, it's probably a double play. And Instead, it's an E6. And it was hit hard, and it was slicing away. He's very tough on himself, but that was a very tough ball to handle because it was going to his right. Watch this ball. Inside out swing. Hits the grass and really takes off sharply. And Jack Wilson tried to get the force at second, but good hustle by Dirk Barton. Forced the ball, hit his shoe, and bounced far enough away that he couldn't get the one out. And you know what, Ray? If the ball isn't hit quite so hard, probably has time to, to backhand it. Yeah. But it was moving away from him a little bit. You saw he tried to get his glove in front of it. It really did not work. And that's why as Andrew Bailey now starts to grab a baseball and get loose. He is hopeful of scoring at least one in this bottom of the eighth inning. A walk in an air, and here's Kuzminov. Jack Wilson, the shortstop. Looks like he's the infielder that's giving the signs. Just in case Kuzminov were to butt, but. He is the A's plate up here, but the Mariners have to be ready in case. This pitch is low. Well, might have a better chance with a wild pitch because Lee throwing hard, but seems to be all over the place. He didn't get the memo either. So with the dare going out. I say that because we'll see, because of force of habit, that if a pitcher wants to go to his mouth, and in the past, had to step off on the grass, off to the dirt. He just did. And now they can be on the dirt yeah. when they go to their mound. Slight rule change. Well, the encouraging thing for the A's is coming back in this game to tie it, but also trying to take the lead and seeing Andrew Bailey because on our last telecast was through Saturday next exhibition game against the Giants. He got one out and walked off the mound with his uh, knee bothering him but it seems to be okay. Not surprising. It is opening night and it is regular season. Bounce to third. Lopez has it to second for one. Double play. Well, the good sinker works for Brandon League there. A five, four, three double play. Uh, Kuz just could not pull it far enough past Lopez as Lopez playing way off the bag. Ryan Swinney going in late and high. So Kuzminov 0 for 4 with four ground outs tonight. Two of those ground outs 
turned into double plays. Kurt Suzuki, though, a chance to give the A's the lead here in the bottom of the eighth. Kurt is 0 for 2 with a walk. Grounded. Wilson has it. Straightens up, throws in time, and just like that, the A's head back to the dugout as they do not score. Good opportunity, but it goes by the wayside. Now the first of two A's Little League and softball days is coming up on Sunday, April 25th. It's a great deal for teams. A hot dog, chips, drink, and game ticket, and it's all for one low price. The teams will be in a pregame parade on the field. Then at 105, the A's take on the Cleveland Indians. To order tickets for your team, call the A's today at 510-638-GO-A's or visit OaklandAthletics.com. Always a special day for the youth to walk around the field. Ninth inning, Gutierrez leads it off against Ziegler. Swings. Gutierrez, Rob Johnson, Jack Wilson. Think about that, 20 round outs. Strike Wood seems like he made the infield a little bit too nice for the opposing team tonight. <laughs> I have to put some bumps in there for for the visitors. If you can work that out, Clay, you're a miracle worker. He is. Well, he is a miracle worker. Yeah, well, he is, but it's for both teams. Yeah. Gutierrez is one for three. He singled in the fourth inning. Strike three call. That little frisbee that Brad Ziegler throws so effectively, and watch it start and then just kind of sweep away. And has thought about swinging, did not. Kurt Suzuki keeps it in the strike zone, perfectly thrown to the outside part of the plate. One out for Rob Johnson. It's been sheets. Blevins, Breslow, and Ziegler. Angels still leading the Twins four to three. Bottom of the seventh inning in Anaheim. Johnson a home run in the second. Hit into a double play in the fourth. Walked in the seventh. We use both their catchers quite a bit this year. Adam Moore and Rob Johnson kind of split the duties. Low on the right, Ardsma on the left. Ardsma, of course, the closer. And a 
three one pitch just misses and it's a walk. It's Rob Johnson. Second time he has walked. A's baseball on Comcast Sportsnet California is brought to you by Cash Creek's Sea Red Get Green promotions with hundreds of prizes every day until April 30th. Visit CashCreek.com for details. Three three game in the ninth. Kurt Young to the mound. Lots of walks tonight. A's pitchers have issued seven walks. And the same number by Mariners pitchers. So 14 walks total. Ten hits in the game. Each team with five. Now buddy. Number two. Jack. So here's an interesting situation, right? There is one out. Go ahead, run at first base. Normally you would think about bunting. But Jack Wilson, a good bunter. Each row in the on deck circle. Would you bunt to try to get the guy over? Hit and run. Ellis fields it. But my point was is give yourself one shot with your best hitter to take the lead. Well, that's exactly what I would do. It. do. And yeah. they've got uh, two switch hitter, actually lefty and then a switch hitter. But we saw it a couple years ago. People think about the Angels. Mike Sosha had his catcher yeah. sacrifice. Safe one out. One shot to win it. And they ended up winning yeah. the game. You got to intentionally walk each row and take the chances with figures. And whether it's. It might be Andrew Bailey coming in to face figures. As he has been heating up and. For the uh, for the A's. And just trying to get to the bottom of the ninth inning with score tied. And a lot of times, if closer will start the, the ninth inning in a tie game. But as us announcers like to say, the wheels are turning here. Late in. So Ichiro, one for four, takes the walk. He had a base hit at the third. And we are indeed, as my partner predicted, going to get a pitching change. The closers coming in. When it comes time for a change, think speedy oil change and tune up. Your oil change, tune up, and small experts. Andrew Bailey comes in. His job is to get the A's back in the dugout for the bottom of the ninth with the score tied at three. The go ahead run is at second base. That is Rob Johnson. Each row at first. Here's Figgins. Swing and he went around indeed on the high fastball. That's a pitch Figgins took first at bat for ball four. Before he started running. Strike inside corner. 
Looks like that one had a little cut on it. Yep, caught the inside corner. The Gil Patterson special that cuts fastball. Oh and two. And Figgins spoiled a good pitch. Well, the outfield can play shallow, which they are in center and left, and figure Sean's just trying to protect. He's got to protect, and if he does, he'll just slap the ball. Curve and Figgins lays off. As we have said, that's the beauty of having been a starting pitcher. Don't just have your sinker slider. He's got the curveball to go along with the fastball, the cut fastball, or a change up occasionally. But most of that power pitcher. Slapped left side. Kuzminov has it. Straight throws high, and Figgins is safe. Barton went up, made the catch, could not get his foot down in time. So that's going to be air number four on the night for the athletics. Well, easy enough play. He just took a little bit extra time and guided the ball across All the right. diamond. The speed All of right. Sean Figgins hey. beat it out. Hey. Hey. Also, he had a runner running in front of him. It looked like Coos wanted to make sure he got past him, but why not run up and tag him? <laughs> Here's Kochman. Cannot make a mistake now with the bases loaded. Inside Kochman, one for three with an RBI double and a sacrifice fly. Didn't miss by much, two and oh. Tim Chin is pretty pretty consistent tonight. That pitch just ended up a little bit too low. That one is in there for a strike. Milton Bradley is in the on deck circle. Two outs. Hits it hard but foul. He broke his back. So two and two. You see Kochman when he guesses, he really gears it up and lets it go as he did with that one. That was a, just a more a four seam fastball, not the cutter in on the hands. Crowd rises to its feet. And the power gets power. You want to take a chance going three and two and really. Let the hitter know what's coming. Everybody will be moving now. Johnson, the runner at third, Ichiro at second, Figgins at first. Bailey's ready. Three, two. Line drive, it's going to drop in the left center field. Two runs are going to score. Kind of a jam shot, soft line drive, but it did the job, and Casey Kochman has four RBIs tonight. And that is the first hit in the inning, sadly. Two walks, one attention on air, and then a bloop base hit with the bases loaded. And got to the point, three and two, knew it was coming, his contact, and. So here's Bradley. And what the A's had hoped in the offseason coming into this year, emphasizing one thing defense. And it's not been helpful tonight. Swing and a miss by Bradley, one and one. So two hits and four RBIs for Kochman tonight.
Bradley is 0 for 2. He's walked a couple times. And now he's behind in the count 1 and 2. Artsma, the closer, is ready to go. The A's will send up Chavez, Ellison, Buck in the bottom of the ninth inning. Swing and a miss. Fastball. Bradley strikes out. Snaps his bat at home plate in disgust. But his teammates get two runs. So the A's got work to do in the bottom of the ninth. Days trail by two, five, three. Days post game live coming up immediately after the game, so stick around for that. Right here at Comcast Sportsnet California. Chavez to lead it off against David Artsma, the closer for the Seattle Mariners. 38 saves last year for Artsma. This is first year as a closer. I don't want to see. Journeyman reliever, that's not fair, but he had bounced around quite a bit. Started with the Giants, went to the Cubs, Boston, but he settled in in Seattle and he was very good last year. Fastball, good fastball, slider, a split. Finger fastball, which is his put away pitch. Just a bit low, three and one. Remember Ardsma. Right at the beginning of the year last year, here in Oakland, it was April 10th. He threw two innings in a Mariner win, and that was his first major league save. And I don't think he had any idea that it would, he would go on to get 37 more. David Ardsma. 3 2, Chavez, and if he reaches for it, pops it down the left field line. Milton Bradley's going to get there. And that's the first out. Milton glances into the seats. And Shami probably swung a ball four, but also a pitch that he can handle. Going to Mark Ellis. Field. Number 14, Mark Ellis. Milton making some friends. Well, Milton kind of glanced in there, and now they're booing him, which means they're going to boo him tomorrow night <laughs> and Wednesday night. In Thursday. Sometimes you bring things on yourself.
Mark Ellis, a couple of walks tonight. Scored a run. Swing and miss. Hayes were down 3 0 going to the bottom of the sixth. And they have not had a lot going against Felix Hernandez, but they battle back to tie the game at three with one in the sixth, two in the seventh. And you just saw Casey Kochman, the story. Strike three called on the inside corner, two outs. Defenses let them down tonight. Now batting, left fielder, number six, Travis Buck. So here's Travis Buck. Buck in the inside corner. Well, after he got through his shabby and when he fell behind and then started to throw a couple of strikes, Argument, which typically a closer will do, settles down a little bit. Travis Bucko for two of the walk. He scored a run in the seventh inning. Fast ball right down the heart, one and one. If Buck can get aboard, Cliff Pennington would hit. But now he's behind one and two. The yards, but Ray talked about. Splitter, he likes to get people out with that, but he pumps that fastball in there quite a bit. Yes, he does. He's, he's got a good one, and you can think about the Mariners that we saw last year power arms out of the bullpen. All right handers. Yep. They do not have a left handed reliever in their bullpen. Deshera, White, Low, Kelly, League, and Artsville, the six right handers. Runs high, so Buck has worked it full. Pop up, foul territory. Lopez racing over, he's going to drop him in the second round. So Buck stays alive. We're tomorrow night, game two of the season. Dallas Braden in Snell. Seven o'clock will come your way. Right here in Comcast Sportsnet, California. A's pregame live before that at 6.30. So join us tomorrow night, Braden and Snell, for game two of the series, game two of the season. Not Cliff Lee as the Mariners nope. had hoped and expected. Strike three called right at the knees on the outside corner, and that's the ball game. So Ardsma comes in as a quiet bottom of the ninth with a couple of strikeouts, and game one of this 2010 season goes to the Seattle Mariners. They defeat the A's tonight by a final score of five to three. Five, six, and one for Seattle. Three, 